Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here, and today I want to sit down and chat to you about my hands-on impressions with Anthem so far. More specifically though, today's impressions will be more linked to the Lost Arcanist mission that I uploaded yesterday. If you haven't seen that, there's about 15 minutes of gameplay playing through the entire mission from start to finish, showing off the Colossus, the Interceptor and the Storm. So if you haven't seen that, you can find that link down below. At the end of last year, I had a chance to go to EA's DICE office in Stockholm as part of the EA Game Changers program. And when I was there, I had a chance to go hands-on with the game and record some gameplay, which is what I'm bringing to you guys. Now, the gameplay in today's video will be largely the same as the stuff you saw yesterday because there is only so much I can upload, but I want to use it as a means to talk about my initial impressions. So if you do enjoy this, then I'd like to be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer whatever I can. And also, if you haven't entered our brand new giveaway, then this month's giveaway is for another Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Nintendo Switch. So click the link in the description box down below if you guys want to enter. Now, to begin with, again, just to give you some context as to what I want to talk about, when you get a chance to play a game early, it's really awesome experience. It puts you in a rather unique position because, of course, I can come and chat to you guys about the game. But at the same time, there will naturally be questions that you guys will want answers to that I just simply can't answer. For example, you probably want to ask things like, hey, what's the end game like? And the answer is, I don't know. I haven't played that stuff. Bear in mind when I was in Stockholm, what I played was the very early part of the game. So I'm playing with javelins that are pretty early on that don't have a great degree of upgrades or you know have essentially base abilities so what I'm speaking more so about in this video is the general feel of the game how it feels to play the kind of moment to moment gameplay when you're shooting things when you're flying around when you're collecting things when you're just experiencing the early game missions of course the stuff that I want to know about myself the end game stuff is stuff I still have to discover so that is of course a topic for another time but for me personally when you're playing a game like this one of these looter shooters so to speak there are two incredibly important things. The first one is the gameplay, it's how it feels, because if you're gonna be playing this game for hundreds or thousands of hours, you wanna make sure that when you are 500 hours in, 1,000 hours in, 2,000 hours in, it still feels cool to shoot that mob or to fire a mortar on that mob or to like fly through the sky. That's incredibly important. Of course, the other side of it is the end game. It's ultimately what will keep me playing and that is something I still ultimately don't know about just yet and hopefully we'll find out more about that, you know, later on this month as we get closer to launch. But again, I want to speak more so about the gameplay because I've had a chance to play this game at various different occasions. You know, I've played it at E3, I've played different builds, and every single time I've played it, it has got and felt better and better. You know, I cast my mind back to some of the earlier times when I had a chance to play through, and you know, while ultimately it still felt good, there were some things that I was like, you know what, that's not quite right, that doesn't quite feel great right now. And you know, I've always been quite vocal about that. I've always made sure to you know communicate that as have plenty of other people. And I can say that the game and the build that I played at the end of last year is in a really, really good position. It honestly feels very, very good to play. Anthem is one of those things where when I first saw it in the trailer, I think back to the very first trailer they showed when they, you know, when they announced the game, you see something like, you know, a mech suit essentially flying through the sky, and you're like, that looks awesome. But the question is, how does that actually feel when you play? And Genuinely flying, you know, from the simple thing of jumping off the ground, activating your boosts and just flying through the sky feels incredible. And that's also coming from someone, let me tell you, who cannot fly a plane or a vehicle in most games to save his life. If you want someone to fly a plane or a helicopter, that's not me. But in Anthem, flying your javelin is very easy, very fluid and feels really good. And of course, because that's going to be the main way that you get around the world, it's important that does feel good. So I play through the majority of my time playing on control pad. You can, of course, do this with mouse and keyboard. I will say I haven't had a chance to experience that, so I can't talk about how it feels to fly with mouse and keyboard, but I can say control pad feels great. It's awesome. You just jump up, you activate your booster, you're flying through the sky. And of course, the only thing that's gonna bring you crashing down is when you overheat. And on that topic, that's actually a really cool mechanic because that does mean you have to get a better understanding of how to fly. You don't just literally activate your boosters and just fly from point A to B, ignoring everything as you go. You need to really learn to master the flight, and I feel like different javelins will appreciate this differently. So Storm is a lot more free to float around a lot more so than other classes. You know, Interceptors are quite fluid. Colossus, I feel like it almost gave me the best experience of flying because it's quite weighty. It overheats a fair bit. So in order to truly get the most out of your flight time, and bear in mind, obviously, when you go and progress through the game and you play as your freelancer and you spend your freelancer points, you can put more points into extended flight time. But I didn't have this. This is the beginning of the game. I'm playing as the base Colossus. But I feel like playing as the Colossus kind of taught me to fly 
really well. And you might not necessarily see that in this gameplay. There's some stuff that I have to show you, you know, coming soon. So stay tuned for that. But the point is, when you're flying as a Colossus, you end up really using what you have at your disposal to try and extend that flight time. You know, when you're flying down, for example, you're not overheating because you're falling. When you are flying above water, and this is the really important thing. This is going to be one of those things where I actually can't wait to see when I have the full game, quite how far you can fly without overheating because you can skim over a lake and while that doesn't cool you down, it does stop you from overheating. So if you fly super close to the ground and there's a body of water, whether it be a lake, a pond, even like a little puddle, if there's a body of water, you can use that to kind of extend your flight time, which is really useful. And of course, you can also then, you know, get yourself really high up and then dip down again. So there's a lot of interesting ways to fly. And I feel like the fact that I picked the Colossus, not just because I'm a Colossus fanboy, but also because it was just, you know, rather convenient. I feel like I got more out of the flying experience because I had to really use that. And that kind of gave me a better appreciation for how it felt. Now, in terms of gunplay, gunplay is really, really cool. It genuinely does feel good to fire the weapons. You have that nice weight to it. It feels good. It sounds good. Now, I will say there is one thing that, for me personally, as someone that played the Colossus, I feel like it might have slightly ruined the other weapons for me. So the Colossus, as I'm sure you guys know, is the only one of the javelins that can use the heavy weapon. So it's the only one that can use the uh, railgun, the machine gun, grenade launcher, things like that. There is a light machine gun, which everyone else can use, but you go in and you use this and it feels awesome. It starts spinning up and it's just like, and it's just like a really, really cool weapon. But you then go back and use a weapon like an assault rifle, a light machine gun, basically the weapons that every other javelin can use, and suddenly you're just like, this doesn't feel as strong. I mean, it is strong, it's perfectly viable. In fact, on the completely opposite end of the spectrum, the handgun that the Interceptor and the other classes can use, like the, you know, the light weapons, they're actually really powerful, really, really powerful. So in terms of actual damage, actual output, it's, it's great. But I went along playing for the whole day as the Colossus using this big machine gun, and any time I was using something that wasn't a machine gun, I always felt like I was doing myself a disservice. But I'm sure that's something that I'll, you know, change my mind of once I start getting like legendary assault rifles or legendary snipers or shotguns. Shotguns are a really cool one. That's something I did actually test out a fair bit a little bit later on because that tends to be a pretty good thing for a Colossus because you'll be up close and personal. You'll kind of run in with them and then you kind of want to switch to it if you want to sort of take something out quickly. So that is actually a pretty cool loadout. But in terms of actual gun feedback, it definitely feels good to take out your enemies, which is incredibly important because you're going to be shooting a lot of enemies in this game throughout your journey. And on top of that, the other cool thing to experience as well is, because I had a chance to play the other javelins, but when playing as Colossus is just how the actual mechanics differ as well. Obviously, you know, visually, they're very different. They all have their own unique abilities. They play differently, but also in terms of, say, for the Colossus, the way your health and shield is managed is actually presented quite differently. You know, you have the Ranger, you have a shield bar and you have a health bar as do you with the Interceptor. I believe the Storm is a little bit different because you want to sort of fly up to actually make sure you activate it. But with the Colossus, your default health bar is just health, no shield. The only way you actually have a shield is when you physically bring your shield out. When you bring it out, you'll see this little half circle, which is your shield bar. And that is essentially how the shield works for the Colossus. So if you're running around with no shield out, you have no shield, which obviously makes sense when you say it. But when you think about it from a gameplay point of view, it's like, ah, okay, that makes sense. So that was a cool thing to actually kind of get my head around. It is still definitely the tanky one, but you also want to make sure that if you are running in, you're going to need that shield. So that was kind of a cool thing to, to you know, get a feel for. And of course, then when you start thinking about it with the other javelins, they are more than just, you know, slightly different abilities and slightly different weights. They also do play quite differently as well, which is a lot of fun. So all up, I will say so far, I've had a great degree of fun playing Anthem. It is hard, again, to try and sort of take what I've done in sort of a condensed four or five hour window and extrapolate that to like a 50, 500 or 5,000 hour window and be like, is this still going to be fun all that way down the line? And for that, I honestly can't tell you right now because there's still a lot of questions I personally have myself. I've experienced a small amount of the content. I've played a few missions. I've played a few free play things, which I can't talk about just yet, but I will do at some point. So there's a lot of stuff that I have experienced. And from what I've kind of tested out so far, it's been a lot of fun. So I think what I will say is provided there is plenty more content to enjoy and provided the content towards the end game is of value and kind of gives me a reason to want to grind and a reason to kind of use the gear that I've been farming and working on, then I'm confident it's gonna be a good game because the gameplay's solid, it feels fun to play, so provided there's a reason to play, then I'm set. So that's kind of all I can say for the time being. There is only so much I can talk about right now. There will be more content coming your way very soon. In fact, on the run up to the VIP demo, I'll have more stuff to share with you guys. I can't say when just yet, but basically, Keep it locked on the channel and you'll have more Anthem content coming your way very, very soon. But for the time being, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, again, any questions, by all means, drop them down below.
Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, if you want to grab some sweet Arax Gaming merch, you can head over to the Endgame store right now. That's linked down below. And you can pick up either the Arax Gaming festive jumper or sweater. And yes, we might be past Christmas, but it's an awesome jumper. So if you want to grab one, they are super limited. There were only 100 of them made, but there are still a few left. So you can pick those up if you want. Plus, we have the limited Yeet pin from 269's live stream. If you want to grab that, the awesome mascot, you get that as a pin and a sticker. So both of those are available to purchase if you guys want to pick them up of course if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to stay tuned don't forget to stay subscribed turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads and you can check out some of the more recent videos linked right here